as you're lying on your back with your legs long and arms long, pay attention to the contact that you're making with the floor. This is also posture. When you're lying on your back, it's also posture. It reflects your habits. It reflects that there are certain muscles that may be contracted. It might be some areas of the body that are a little shortened. Feel your spine, 24 vertebrae of your spine. How are they interacting with the floor? Which parts are staying on the ground and which parts are lifted, raised? Initially, if you're new to the Feldenkrais method, this may feel very vague. You might feel some general hints like, oh, my back is very much off the floor, but I can't tell which vertebra. See if you can slowly paint a picture, better and better picture, because as we start to learn to move and then alter movement in different sections of the spine, it's good to develop better awareness. Somebody said on the, in the audience that uh, Kasha, my wife, told me to always put a pillow under my torso when lying on the belly. So should I do these extensions? Uh, it's not necessarily a counterindication. And pay attention to as we progress with the lesson, if you're feeling comfortable. As a general rule, whether you have a diagnosis or not, we want to unlink pain from movement, from posture. So we stay away from pain. If you feel discomfort, whether you have a formal diagnosis or not, please try to alter how you do what you do, how big movement is, how often you rest, because we want to make it a comfortable experience so your brain will crave it. Feel how straight or on the midline your spine is. If you paint that line from your head to your tailbone, would you say it's more or less a straight line on the midline or is it a little bit of an S curve or C curve? Maybe it's clear, maybe it's fuzzy. Notice your breathing, how well your belly, your chest are moving with each inhalation and each exhalation. Which parts of your breathing apparatus are moving when you breathe in and when you breathe out? Now bend your knees. Some of you I see will be much more comfortable with knees bent. Again, if you find that, always take care of yourself. Stay with the knees bent. And please put both of your hands into a clapping position or like a prayer position when your palms and fingers and the heels of your hands will touch each other. And your hands are somewhere in front of your chest. Elbows are bent. So it's not a triangle position, but elbows are bent, like for prayer. Like you see Buddhists or other religions, hands in the prayer pose. And now begin to make a movement of your hands sliding all along the midline toward your head, toward your face and back with your heels of your hands toward your chest. So you will make a movement of your hands a little bit in the direction above your head. And then the movements of the hands toward your chest, or maybe for some of you toward the belly, of course, your wrists need to bend more and more as you're coming lower down. Your fingertips always will stay 
pointing upward in the direction of your head. So don't make them point the ceiling, make them point as if you were really praying. Sliding, sliding the hands up on the midline and then sliding them down. And see, can you experience that this movement of your hands going upward is already a form of extension? What parts of your spine are starting to lift? What part of your back is beginning to arch? Of course, it will be very subtle. Some of you at the first attempt will say, I don't feel anything changing in my back. I'm just moving my arms. But listen to small whispers of movement. As you lift your hands, moving them up, watch what parts of your spine or rib cage begin to change contact with the floor. This is very likely linked to your habit of where you normally bend backward. Some of us, when we try to be more upright or have a good posture, we arch in that very place. For many of us, it will be the junction between the thoracic spine and lumbar spine, where the lowest of your ribs are. Often that arc of the ribs of right above your belly pushes, pops forward when we arch like that. See if that's what's happening when you do that, or if you're finding bending backward in another place. Good. Put your arms down and rest, please. In terms of number of repetitions, always listen to yourself. If the rest of the group is doing 10 movements, 15 movements, 20 movements, but you, after three movements, feel that you need rest, please listen to yourself. Don't worry that the teacher is still saying things and still instructing. You take care of yourself. This would mean that you're learning how to be kind to yourself, how to create, create environment for healing, for getting better. And straighten your legs for a second and feel if maybe your contact with the floor is already a little different than when we started a moment ago. Maybe the difference is not huge, but listen, something about your shoulder blades, your ribs, your spine, your lower back, your middle back, your upper back or neck, different. Feel, what's your sense of safety? How safe you are now? Do you feel safe now or do you feel on guard? You feel ready to protect yourself. Throughout the course, I'll be referring to that because we need to learn how to read this early whispers, early signs that what we're doing is not good for us. Or maybe we're straining, maybe we're too ambitious. We want to improve that posture too fast. We don't want to evoke in our nervous system protective responses in form of more tension, holding breath, clenching jaw, scary frowned forehead, eyebrows squinted. What we want is more of a soft, supple, easy, comfortable state. Bend your knees, please. Put your hands in the prayer position again and begin to make a movement of your hands now from that midline little bit to the right and upward. So instead of staying on the midline like you did before, the hands don't go to the ceiling. Some of you are moving just to the ceiling. It's in the direction where your crown of your head is pointing. So this is your fingers move in the direction of the wall that's above you. The wall that's above the crown of your head. In the Feldenkrais method, we always talk about, or always, sometimes we make mistakes, but we strive to think of directions according to you, not the room. So room, ceiling is up. But when you're lying on your back, up is where your head is. Down is where your feet are. So back to your hands together and continue moving to the right and up. And then come back. So the movement is slightly off the midline. It goes a little to the right as you go up. Not necessarily far to start rolling all the way onto your side. No need to go that far. 
but just simply your left arm will come a little bit more across the body or to the right. Your left shoulder blade will move a little bit more than the off the floor than the right one. Feel weight is shifting a little bit toward the right side and then come back and feel how can you do it like a good prayer? It needs to be done with devotion, not mechanical, not hard, but softly. You're moving your hands up and to the right, you're coming back. No need to hold your breath. No need to tense up. Simply. Find a range of motion that feels comfortable to you. And sense what parts of you arches or lifts off the floor that is different than what you felt when you were staying on the midline. Maybe now it's more of the left side of the back or ribs on the left side that come a little bit away from the floor. Exhale as you move your hands up. Inhale as you're returning back home to position to your breastbone or to your lower be upper belly. Super. Now a few times to the left and up and feel what's the difference. If you feel that it's not completely symmetrical, here you have the effects of the habits. Somehow your habitual position, whether it's through scoliosis or some other quote unquote diagnosis or not, or just a normal life that makes us asymmetrical, you'll find that certain movements feel easier to the right, certain to the left, Observe, you go up and to the left a little bit. It's your right shoulder blade that is asked to lift a little bit more than the left. And feel if the right ribs or right parts of your back start to pick up off the floor as you go up and to the left. And now alternate. One time go to the right and up, and next time to the left and up. Work with simplicity, really making it kind of like Feldenkrais said that the best way to do the lesson is as if you were wasting your time. Can you do movements like that, that you're wasting your time? You're kind of half drooling, half sleeping, half paying attention, but you're not ambitious, you're not fixated on making some monotonous repetitions, but rather up and to the right, come back, up and to the left, come back. Wonderful. Stop. Rest a moment. Put your arms down. If you're comfortable, straighten your legs. If not, keep them bent. And observe anything different in your posture, in the way your shoulders lie, in the way your ribs connect with the floor, the shape of your chest, in the way your spine is sinking to the ground. Please bend your right knee. Bend your right knee. Bring your hands back to the prayer position, just like you had. And this time, your right knee is bent. Foot is on the floor, standing, or on the mat, or on the bed. And go on with your hands up and to the left. And feel. What's that feels like? Your left leg is long. The right knee is bent. And you're moving your hands up and to the left. Up meaning toward the wall above your, above the crown of your head. Not where the forehead is, but the crown of your head. You're moving toward the wall above you, 
not in front of you. Ceiling is in front of you. But the wall above you, if you extended a line, if you had a pencil attached to the crown of your head, the tip of a pencil is pointing up, meaning to the wall above you. Go to the left and up and watch. Can you feel that your right foot automatically starts to press a little bit to the ground, doesn't it? Can you feel it? That the right foot can help the movement of the hands to the left and up. Very gently activate your right foot and press it a little bit into the ground. Nothing again massive, not to clench, not to get straining in effort. No, simply. How can gentle stepping on the right foot can roll the pelvis a little bit to the left and it helps you move off of the midline of your spine, a little bit to the left side of your spine. Back and forth, back and forth, gently, simply. Again, exhale as you do it, inhale as you come back. Feel which ribs come off the floor as you do this movement. Which part of your back is lifting of the floor? And how close it is to the place, your habitual place of lifting. We shouldn't de demonize our habits. After all, habits are very good for us. They help us be effective and efficient. We're not wasting time. We conserve energy because of having habits. Of course, sometimes habits lead to troubles like often musculoskeletal injuries occur in places where person is moving too much already. But before we have any chance of changing that habit, that place where you move too much, you need to learn about it. You need to learn to feel it. Feel the real estate of your back to sense something that you didn't feel before to sense the difference between third rib, fourth rib, fifth rib, sixth rib, etc. Great. Switch legs. Have your left knee bent and right leg straight. Still go to the left with your hands and feel this is funny. Would you say that's easier or would you say this is a little bit you're getting in your own way? Pay attention, you're still going up and to the left, but this time it's your left knee that's bent. Can you feel? We introduced an element of constraint. Having the left knee bent does not welcome rotation or rolling of the pelvis to the left. In fact, the pelvis wants to roll right, right? If you, if you step on the left foot, your belly button will want to go to the right, but your hands go to the left, and hence we have some difficulty. Can you feel some? Some of you will feel, quote unquote, this is a wrong leg to stand. Can you sense that? Of course, some of us, it may feel like, no, I don't agree with you, Marek. I like this better than the first time. And therefore, stay with your experience, listen to it, notice. And your elbows are bent, so you're straightening them as you're going up. But as you're returning, you don't keep your elbows stiffly straight. Switch legs again and feel if that works better for you. Bend your right knee, straighten the left one, and feel if you had a choice between the two. If you want your prayer to be heard, <laughs> which leg would you bend? Does it make it nicer in one direction? Feel, feel, feel. In a worse scenario, you're, you're trying to find the answer, but you don't know. And that's okay. A lot of our learning is like this. We ask questions, we don't have answer. But our ability to stick with a problem is what makes a great learner. Where you don't find answer right away, you don't give up. You stay, you keep questioning. Oh, let me see it again. Let me try it again. Stop, straighten your arms down at your side, straighten your legs. Observe, 
is there some difference in how your back is lying now? Would you say this asymmetrical movement to the left created some shift in you? Is one shoulder blade flatter, closer to the ground? Rib cage, back, pelvis. What's your sense of safety now? Are we traveling within safe waters or are we traveling and you're getting more tense, more uptight, held breath, less of the body yielding to the floor, to gravity? If so, before you quit, see if you can change something about how you do the movements. Maybe less, smaller, maybe more Rest time in between movements. You do one, two, three movements, stop and rest. Now, please bend your left knee and begin to move your hands up and to the right. We'll give ourselves a chance to experience the movement that you already know from what we did a moment ago. But each movement is a unique opportunity to learn from, from beginning, beginning anew back and forth, to the right and up. And feel if your left foot automatically presses. And if your pelvis is turning, if you feel weight shifting a little bit onto the right side of your spine or off of your spine even to the right, feel what parts of your back lift. And learn from movement. I see some of you move in such a way that it's as if you were following instruction only, that your attention is to just do, 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 do. But see if you could switch. You want to listen to your experience while doing. The movement itself is not important. It's, in other words, some, some of us are so used to um, exercises like sets of exercises, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and we don't pay attention, but we just pay attention to the number. I have two more sets of repetition. See if you can let go of it, but actually learn from your experience because that's what you did when you were a baby. You didn't count repetitions. You didn't have an idea of how many sets of movements you had to do. You were fully immersed in your experience that nothing else mattered. And you just were there with yourself, playing around, moving, turning, shifting, listening to your body, listening to your state of mind. Switch legs and continue going to the right and feel if on that side, it's also as strange to go to the right if it, the movement is blocking the pelvis if maybe it introduces some other extension in some other place maybe that's a very habitual place for you that's where you bend a lot if so just notice that watch ah that's that's easy for me i constrain my pelvis i bend the quote-unquote wrong knee and i started to arch that place Couple more times, simply. And then switch legs again, bending your left knee. And feel if that clarify that. The movement is better. Wonderful. Stop and lie on your back with your arms down, stretch out your legs if you're comfortable with them long. Observe quality of your contact with the floor. How much of your spine can you actually sense? Sometimes we only use word, I feel, my ex is where where we feel pain but this is this is not what i want that's not what what we want you want to feel your spine which doesn't mean you feel pain 
but you feel movement, you feel pressure of the vertebra into the floor. You're aware of your spine, aware as in good thing. Awareness is a good thing. It's not pain. Please come up to sitting and sit on a chair. See if you can get up, find a chair in your room. Maybe I don't recommend sofas because sofas are so soft and we're kind of sagging in the sofas. See if you can find a chair or a play stool or something where you can be comfortable. And come to the front edge of that seat. Front edge of the chair. So you're not sitting too far, too deep back. Place your hands again into a prayer position like we did. And go on. On the midline, lifting your hands upward. See, right now, people will not make mistake, right? I say upward. I, say, I give the same instruction than before. And upward for all of us, of course, it's there, right? It's, it's north. But when you are lying down and I said, move upward, some of you were moving forward to the front, mixing the direction to, from the external world versus our own internal world. So throughout the session, we're doing that, what you're doing right now, hands moving where the crown of the head is pointing. And go back and forth and feel how when you're sitting, what happens throughout your spine? Follow your hands with your eyes. Look at your hands. You don't have to go to the limit. Look at your hands, which will mean your head will tilt a little bit back. Feel the spine between your shoulder blades. Feel again, where are your habitual places? Which place you bend backward? This is not the only way. And I hope in 30 days, you will know that you have so many choices, not just what, what we're doing at the get-go, when we are not thinking, when we rely on the habit. Back and forth. And then I encourage you to do less than you're doing. Do 60% of what you just did. Even, even you can have a very successful session doing what I'm doing right now. Just that much. Lift just that much. Because in your spine, that's enough to feel middle back, first thoracic, second thoracic. You don't have to go all the way up there in order to reach those places. Your spine should be moving throughout from the first moment, from the first whisper of movement. Good, place your hands down and rest. This is one of the principles that, that we want functional integration. We want your skeleton to be integrated in totality in whatever you do. If you look up, if you look down, if you turn right, if you turn left, we want entire skeleton, all 206 bones to do what you're doing. And so often, this is not the case. So often I lift up, but I'm sinking somewhere in, in middle back or scrunching someplace in myself. Place your hands again into a prayer position and now go up and to the right and feel what's that like. Watch. What is your pelvis doing as you go up and to the right? Can you feel your shoulders, your rib cage turn to the right and follow your hands? Look how your gaze is turning to the right and up. Feel which side of your back is starting to arch more. You felt it already lying on the back. Now it's another opportunity. Notice how your pelvis is moving in your hips, around your thighs. Is your pelvis moving? Can you feel pelvis, belly button, your whole belly going a little bit to the right, 
turning to the right as you go right and up? Or is your belly committed and stubborn, just pointing straight forward or maybe pointing even down while you are trying to lift up? If so, it's kind of contradictory if saying yes and no at the same time. Do this on the left side, to the left, up and to the left, and observe. Allow your face to turn just like your hands. Follow your thumbs with your hands. This time it's to the left and up. And feel how that goes. Don't fatigue yourself. If you're fatiguing, drop your arms down, rest a moment, do one, two movements, come back and rest. Because otherwise, what happens is you're linking, you're learning that movement equals fatigue, movement equals difficulty, jerkiness, jumpiness, movement equals pain. We don't need lessons in that. Life gives us enough lesson about misery, right? We don't need more of that. Beautiful. Stop, lie on your back, please. And watch, what's your posture like now? Lying on the back, is it a little different than when we started? How many vertebrae of your spine can you actually connect with? Sense, feel, count, move your attention and say, oh yeah, little vertebra, I feel you there. And go an inch or two below, can I feel you there? Or is it a dark room? Nobody knows who lives there. And if so, well, we have 30 more days to, to work on it, to improve, to say hello to those places that we take for granted. Now, the next sequence will be in sitting on the floor. However, I know that for many of us Westerners, sitting on the floor is a no not comfortable thing. If you find that sitting on the floor is difficult for your back, for your neck, or any place, go back to the chair. If you find that you're getting tired, fatigued sooner, go back to the chair. For everyone else, bend your knees, sit cross-legged, bring your hands to prayer position, and go on a few times on the midline, Lifting up, your eyes up, hands up, and then coming back. Feel, how do you know where midline is? You see, if we really pay attention, you will be surprised how many of us deviate. We go a little right, and then we go a little to the left. And that may be a sign of scoliosis, that the back is organized in such a way that it creates a little bit of a zigzag or little veering. Doesn't mean you have to fight it, but be aware of it. You're going to the midline, on the midline and up, come back. Watch how your breastbone, is your breastbone following your hands? Now, the trouble for us Westerners is that our hips often do not allow the pelvis to move. Feel, as you're sitting on the floor, can your pelvis still rock forward? as you're going up? Can it rock back as you're returning down? For many of us, the, the hips don't allow that and the pelvis is pushed backward. We're kind of falling back and then it's very difficult and we try to do something like this and we only end up with achy back. If so, sit on the chair where you have a much easier time to do this movement. Beautiful. Rest, lean on your hands behind you for a moment. Just briefly. Come back to the front, sitting. And this time go up and to the right. 
And let's examine. Well, first, let's see what it feels like. Do this movement a few times, up and to the right. Watch how your pelvis now is going forward and the belly button turns a little bit right. It will matter which leg is crossed in front the other. Become aware, don't do anything yet. Become aware which foot is closer to your pelvis. You're going up and to the right. Would you think it will make it better to have the right leg in front or right leg closer to your pelvis? Go ahead, if you haven't already been sitting, bring your right foot closer to you. Right foot closer, left foot further away. That's right. And continue with the movement. Go to the right and up. Feel, are you shifting weight to the right buttock? Are you going forward with your pelvis over the right leg? The right foot closer to your pelvis, the right foot. The other right foot closer to the pelvis. Switch legs and continue going to the right and see, does it make a difference? Would you say this is easier for you to come forward and up or this is not so easy? Yeah, not so easy. But of course we have habits that we can, everybody has a habit. One leg normally goes more in front than the other. And therefore it can influence how we turn, how we bend, how we do anything. Good, rest a moment before we try the other side. And from the other side, maybe let's cross the left leg in front. So the left foot is very close to your pubic bone or pelvis, and the right foot is uh, further away in front of the left shin. And bring your hands and go forward and to the left this time and see, can your weight move forward and to the left onto your left seat bone? Can your belly button turn, breastbone turn? Can you feel your this movement? is really everything is going to heaven, to where we're praying, to the left and up, breastbone, collarbones, chest, pubic bone. Switch legs and feel that. If you're sitting on the chair, you can still cross legs and see if, if you cross one foot in front of the other, if that also makes a difference. And feel the difference. One way again, will feel a little bit off. You still can muscle through, push it and force it, but one way will be a little easier. And look at your hands. So look at your hands as you're going up. Don't lift the arms so high. Go and follow your hands with your eyes, with your nose, with your face. Good. Lie on your back, please. And observe what's different in the way you're lying on your back right now. Your contact with the floor, width of your back, your shoulders, openness in your chest. Anything different? Are you breathing better? Maybe your breastbone is freer to lift, to lower your ribs. The mechanics of the chest is maybe a little freer. Bend both of your knees, please. Bring your hands to the original position, the praying position, and go on with a basic beginning movement. Lift your hands on the midline and go upward above your head. Now you know where up is, right? It's not the ceiling.
because after all if when it comes to right and left unless we dyslexic we don't have that difficulty if i tell you turn your head right you wouldn't be asking me your right or my right or room's right or who's right you would turn head right but when we say move up it becomes a little fuzzy because we mix up the configuration. But if you're doing, if you're an athlete doing some gymnastic saltos or figure skating, twirling, spinning, jumping, you better know where up, down, right, left is no matter where you are in the room. See, which parts of your spine are lifting now? Is more of your spine coming up or are you relying only on the same set of vertebrae as before? Can you feel that you could move, especially for those of you who move too much in some place? Could you leave it alone and move your arms, your hands up and allow other parts to start to come up? The problem with habits is often that they, they take over. A certain configuration takes over no matter what. If you're trying to activate something between the shoulder blades, that pesky lumbar vertebra arches, pushes, or some other place takes over. See if that's why it's so important that we don't effort. Because when you effort, of course, you have to try hard and therefore you, you will use what you already know what to do. Good, stop and rest. Put your hands down, stretch out your legs, watch. We'll do another configuration that will help us. And the beauty of the Feldenkrais method is in variation that we use many, many varieties for, of movement or experiences for learning. Instead of repeating just the same old, same old, same old, we're doing it one way, second way, third way, fourth, fifth way, and we keep on adding experiences. So learning can be solidified, stronger, reinforced, and hands. Come on your hands and knees if you can. Some of you have sensitive knees, don't do that. Just skip, see if you can be okay not doing it. Come on hands and knees, and now bring yourself on your forearms and elbows, putting your hands in the prayer position. So actually lean on your elbows and knees and put your palms together like for prayer and see if we can do a tricky thing. If we can reverse, instead of moving the hands, Go your, with your body, with your pelvis a little bit backward and come forward and go backward and come forward. Now your hands stay fixed, but physically they're kind of moving this, doing the similar thing, right? They're moving above your head. As you go down towards sitting on your heels, again, you don't have to, in order to succeed, you don't have to sit on the heels. You can do one inch of movement, but don't slide your hands. Keep your elbows glued to the floor, which means that your shoulders need to move. Your shoulder blades need to move. Feel spine between your shoulder blades. Can this sink? Can you feel arching in that place? Going backward toward your heels and feel can back between your shoulder blades arch. Continue and keep looking at your hands or thumbs, which will mean that the head and neck needs to arch a little bit as you're going back. Be gentle. Exhale as you move your buttocks toward your heels and look at your thumbs. Inhale as you return. Feel spine between your shoulder blades. Can this become active? Can there be less movement of arching in the junction between your thoracic spine and lumbar spine? Could you leave that part alone? Good. 
Now, a few times do the opposition. As you're going back toward your heels, look between your legs and down. In other words, the head slumps forward and the spine between your shoulder blades rounds. Therefore, no arching there. When you move backward, look down and feel the spine between your shoulder blades become like a camel's hump a little bit, right? You're emphasizing thoracic kyphosis, roundness. And now go back to looking at your thumbs and allow the spine between your shoulder blades to sink a little bit as you go back. How can that part of your back, that vertebra, what would that feel like for that part of the spine to start bending backward? Excellent. Leave it. Lie on your back, please. Notice contact that you have with the floor now. Is your spine longer? As it gets longer, more of it will touch the floor. As you know, the straight line is the longest. Bridges make the distance shorter. Feel the distance between your heels and crown of your head. How long, how tall is that? Please bend both of your knees and do the original movement and see if it's a little bit better. Bring palms together and go on on the midline a few times. Bring your hands up and feel can the spine between your shoulder blades also lift a little bit? Is it more alive? Is there more life in that place? Exhale as you're sliding your hands upward. Inhale on the return, up on the return. Exhale as you're lifting. Now two times up and to the right. Two times up and to the left. Excellent. And stop, rest a moment. And I'll give you a minute to just lie quietly, do nothing. Allow your hippocampus, that place that is responsible for memory formation, to replay the event replay what you just felt, what just happened. Please bend both of your knees, roll to your side, come up to sitting on the chair again. Gently transition in your own rhythm, your own pace. No rushing. See, as you're developing quality, gracefulness of movement, see if you can borrow from those experiences and fill the rest of the day with them. You open the door and are you opening the door by yanking it and clenching your jaw, you driving, steering wheel, gripping, or can there be some of that feeling of quality of smoothness, flow, ease in you? 
bring your hands to prayer position go again lift your hands up and look at your thumbs and then come back feel parts of your spine between your shoulder blades is that more life there is there more life there You have six vertebra between your shoulder blades. Each one could move a little bit relatively to the neighboring place. So often we have a like a, almost like a turtle shell of a few vertebra that are almost fused. They're not physically fused, but they act as if they were fused and they just move all or nothing. But see if these lessons could bring one millimeter of motion a little bit of freedom to move in that place that would unload the place that normally takes over. Now, continue doing this, but look with your eyes down. Head is still going up. So if you thought of a string attached to your nose, it's still lifting, but now eyes look as if you were looking underneath your glasses. And then come back, eyes look up as you come back. It's tricky because your head will be confused. Should the head go with the eyes or should the head go with the fingers? Make your head goes with your fingers. Head is looking up, but eyes direct down, look down. Head is returning to the front or perhaps even a little lower below the front, but eyes look up. See if you can figure it out. If you can disconnect your eyes from the rest of your spine. As it's difficult, some of you will try to make it bigger. Don't do bigger. Make it small movement. You can have a fantastic movement with the just first inch of motion. Nose is moving half an inch, but eyes look down. Nose is moving down. Eyes look up. See if you can free up neurons in your brain that are responsible for moving your eyes from the neurons that extend your spine. Go back to looking up in the same direction as your head. See, that should feel better. That should feel freer. What a relief not to do this mental gymnastics of eyes in that position. Leave it alone. Put your hands on your lap. Rest. Feel how you're sitting right now. I see many people sitting like Buddhas, beautifully upright, tall. Can you feel it different? Maybe we're just part-time Buddhas, but that's okay. We'll take it. A little improvement. It's all right. Bring your hands back. Now we differentiate your head and eyes from the movement, meaning your eyes and head will go in the same direction. First, first let's do what's easy. Everything up, everything down. Everything up, everything down. And now, hands go up, but the head goes down with your eyes. Head lifts up, hands return back to your chest. Your hands move up, your head is slumping a little bit. Now, as with everything, there are many strategies that you don't even realize we have. Is your spine between your shoulder blades following your head or following your hands? For some people, it will follow the head. For others, it will follow hands. What do I mean by following hands? When the hands go up, the spine arches, right? So therefore, that can arch and the head could go down, but the spine between your shoulder blades could still arch. For others... It's so unfamiliar that it's the opposite. The head goes down, the turtle shell of the middle back rounds, and we move the hands from the shoulders. Nothing, no demon in that too. It's okay. But it's knowing that it's only one of many options that we have. And what we want is to tap, to visit a little bit of this way, a little bit of that way, so you have options. Wonderful. Go back to original movement, hands and eyes and everything up, and it will feel, oh, so much better. 
so much lighter. Beautiful. Stop and rest. You can even slouch. Sit back, rest, relax. Nothing wrong with slouching. Per providing that it's not ongoing, that it's not the only way. If it's the only way, then it's a problem because it's a habit. It's the thing that overrides all our activities. The last two movements will be performed in kneeling upright. If you have sensitive knees, again, skip it. Do it in sitting with legs mimicking kneeling. One, you can sit with one foot underneath the chair. So it will be kind of similar. For all the rest, come up onto your left knee and right foot. Right foot in front, left knee kneeling. Place your hands in the place that you already know, prayer position, and go on with the movement up and feel this alignment of, or, of the legs will dictate turning a little bit to one direction. Can you feel which one is that? Are you turning up and to the right or are you turning up and to the left? Your right foot in front and you're kneeling on the left knee. Of course, it's a balancing problem, right? You feel a little wobbly, a little. Some of you may need to be somewhere close to a shelf. Or Again, you can do it very well sitting. No need to kneel if you're not comfortable. And go ahead, go to the left and up a few times. Feel having the right foot in front allows the pelvis to easily turn to the left. Try going to the right and up and feel, can you sense? It's not impossible, but it's probably not your preferred place. Although for some of us with scoliosis, it, the, the, the theme, the, the pattern is so strong that no matter which leg is, which how pelvis is oriented, we still feel it the same. Excellent, switch legs, please. Or maybe sit for a moment, come on all fours, massage your knee if needed, unload it, wiggle, do anything to rest for a second. And then switch legs. It's your left foot now and the right knee. And feel when you're kneeling upright like this, can you sense that your belly button is skewed a little bit to the right? Place your hands in this position and feel if when you go up, if it's so much easier to go up and to the right, or if it's easier to go up and to the left. Can you feel spine between your shoulder blades in this problematic, balance challenging position? Here, your spine, since we are wobbly, we need to find balance spot on. And therefore, there is less room for being scrunched or head falling to the one side, shoulder dropping on one side, because that will throw you off balance. This difficult position is asking you to know, get on point, get into a place where spine, legs are organized in such a way that your bones support you. Excellent. Leave it. Lie on your back, please. on your back, put your arms down, legs long, feel what this past hour do to your sense of yourself, to your contact with the floor, to your breathing, to your sense of safety. And to your posture. And the last time, bend both of your knees, bring your hands into a prayer position and do two or three movements straight up, two movements to the right, two movements to the left. And watch, how is this comparing to when we started? Can you feel your hands move lighter, chest, breastbone, collarbones, spinal bones, joining your movement of the arms? 
with more simplicity, more integration. Perfect. Leave it all alone and please roll to your side and come up to sitting and come to standing. And note what's how you manage, how your brain manages gravity now. Most likely is different. It's very unlikely that it isn't, that is completely the same as it was an hour ago. It's impossible to do all these variations and have no change. Now the question is, can we feel it? Can we be aware of it? That's a different story. But listen, what's your sense of uprightness? Midline, how the head is carried by your spine. Remember that idealized spine image from the beginning of the, the theoretical portion, the 30, 35 degrees neck arch, middle back, lower back. Is that more like that? Is that feeling a little simpler? Walk around and we finish this lesson. Thank you very much.